and I want to make some comments with regard to the transient vendor ordinance. I didn't think I'd be back here tonight because I thought council hit a home run two weeks ago with what I'm going to call the blue line version of chapter 732. But I'm back and I'm a little bit disappointed with certain aspects of the current rewrite. In particular, the requirement for individual vendor permits. The new proposal moves us back to charging each vendor for a permit rather than charging the event organizer a flat $200 for the season based on number of vendors. So rhetorically, what moved you away from the more sensible, reasonable flat rate? As we've discussed before, and I've explained to you before, imposing a permit fee on each of our vendors makes the Loveland Farmers Market non-competitive when you compare us with other area markets. And you heard one of our very popular vendors, Joe Waller, say at the last council meeting that he can set up at other markets in the, within a five to seven mile radius of Loveland and he won't be penalized for the privilege of doing business there. If you were a farmer or a cottage industry business owner, would you pay $50 just to come to Loveland? What makes coming here so special that it commands a premium? Wouldn't you ask yourself, is the price to play in Loveland a non-starter compared to other venues? Several vendors have already gotten back to us and said they'll not participate in the Loveland Farmers Market if they're forced to pay for a vendor permit. Their profit margins are slim. These are small businesses and they have to watch their pennies, not just the dollars. And the vendors are our market. Without them, there's no Loveland Farmers Market. And our loyal shoppers who number anywhere from 700 to 900 people a week, they certainly don't want to see the Loveland Farmers Market drive and die. There's another downside to the vendor permit issue. If our vendors vote with their feet, guess what? Their loyal Loveland customers will follow them to Madeira, Montgomery, Westchester, Deerfield, and guess what Lovelanders will find there? Lots of interesting shops, plenty of eateries, and they'll discover other venues for entertainment. Do we really want to drive business to our neighboring communities? Whose economy do we want to support and sustain? Personally, I want to drive that business into historic downtown Loveland. You've heard from several of these business owners in the past, and they comment that on Tuesdays during market season, they see an uptick in their business. Shouldn't we cultivate rather than kill that golden goose? Um, Mr. Mayor, your wife Linda has shopped at the Loveland Farmer's Market before. I, it's been a while, but um, I talked to her one day. She was buying peaches to take home. She was going to bake you a pie for supper. If her favorite produce vendor walked because the price to play in Loveland was just too much, how would you feel about her patronizing the markets of Madeira or Montgomery instead of shopping here? And at a meeting last week that both Mrs. Sattel and I attended, she shared with our group that there's a dog park being planned for downtown, um, downtown Loveland. And it's not an, an exact quote, but she said something to the order of, um, we don't want our residents having to go to Sims Township to exercise their dogs. Now this begs the question, would it be okay to kill the market with punitive fees and drive 700 to 900 people to shop in Madeira and Montgomery each week? And one more point to ponder. Our city doesn't bat an eye when handing out various concessions to attract new businesses or to facilitate business expansion in Loveland. And I get it, there are valid reasons for doing that. But thousands of dollars are usually involved, and these businesses are well healed. They can easily carry out their business objectives without any monetary incentives, incentives from Loveland taxpayers. Yet here we are, trying to shake down farmers and cottage industry people for their hard-earned bucks. It reminds me of a cartoon scenario where after a party, the husband and wife are flipping over couch cushions, diving for loose change their house guests might have left behind. That's not a picture that I'd like to paint for Loveland. So how do we get back on a positive track? Well, let's put that blue-lined version of the flat fee provision for special events 
back into chapter 732, as was written by Ms. Bailey and Ms. Gross. Or let's add it to the special events fee schedule. But either way, please support the vendors who contribute value to all of our special events. Let's don't penalize and drive them to our neighboring communities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd ask you not to uh, uh, applaud at the conclusion of the comments.